Hello YouTubers, it's Ben here with a Kapow Toys review. Today we're looking at the Generations Direct Order Megatron from the Transformers Generations line. This is obviously a G2 a repaint and slightly retooled uh, version of the, I think it was originally the Bludgeon mold. Um, what is this? This the first... I think this is the fourth release for this mold. Obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, your Megatron comes in a bog standard generations box, which is a little disappointing considering these are direct order products. Let's have a look at the artwork. Just a nice picture of Megatron there, bit of a smirk, um, some details about him, and his tech spec. And on the other side, we've got Voyager class, his Decepticon logo, also available. Power Dive. Right, on the back we've got a picture of Megatron in his robot mode with his two swords, a two-in-one vehicle to robot, and a little plug gear for Transformers Prime. Right, out of the packet we have a very, very G2-esque tank. Uh, very vibrant colour, uh, it does roll slightly. Um, unfortunately the plastic has warped. Um, I really would have hoped um, Hasbro, Takara, whoever done it, I really hoped they would have done something about this very brittle, very poor plastic quality of the weapons. Um, the top of the tank does turn. Um, unfortunately, there's no movement up and down. And the gun on top also turns. It's a very good colour. Um, nice use of the uh, chrome paint on top there. Fairly detailed. Um, Paint naps on the red is a bit poor. Um, not a lot of kibble underneath. Um, I like it. It's good to look at. Um, yeah, it could do with a few stickers, maybe maybe repro label, something like that. It's a lot smaller than the G2 tank. I, I, but hey, it's uh, unfortunately us Transformer fans are having to make do these days. I'll be honest with you, I would have liked... Uh, a few stickers or something to come with this just to liven it up just a bit just to make it a little bit more G2 but all in all it's not a bad look now let's get this guy transformed first of all you want to pull down the treads and like I said basically just clipped on four in total and four the next step is to just wiggle this back section and lift it up. Do that for both sides. Then you want to flip his undercarriage up. Wiggle the legs down like so. So you should be left with something that looks like this. The next step is to fold his undercarriage in on itself and it should lock into place. Just uh, slide these green protectors down to the back. Fold the legs down like so and turn them in on themselves and push. Right, your next step is to just turn his legs so the uh, treads are facing outwards you want to open up the back of the leg and fold these feet down like so then close the back of the leg the next step is to open up the arms at the top of the body and fold down you then want to twist these kind of unfold the arms and push the shoulder pads down. You kind of unwrap the arm, they're folded in on themselves, twist them round and just pop his hands out. Fold his chest piece down and push the body in on itself, revealing the head. Push and lock into place. The next step is open up the back of the tank turret. It's quite stiff and as you can see it's on a mechanism so once it opens the uh, sword is revealed. Well that's the dagger isn't it? And close that back up. 
and pull the ill-fitting, badly shaped sword out of the turret. Now, I absolutely hate these hands. Why did they not change the hands? You can't just plug a weapon in. You have to push the hand and kind of slide the weapon in sideways. Why they didn't replace them hands, I'll never know. I personally store my daggers in his hilt. Again, job to slide it in there because the sword is incredibly warped. But it is very Armada-esque. Kind of looks like a front-facing cannon. Now, here we have him fully transformed. In my personal opinion, I don't think they've done enough. Um, I like the mould. I like what they've done with the colour. Um, but they haven't done enough. There's still the same faults that have been present every time they have reused this mould. I mean, my biggest gripe is those hands and the feet. The feet are absolutely terrible. There's just no balance there whatsoever. It took me about 20 minutes just to pose this guy. Um, don't get me wrong, he's a nice figure, and if you haven't already got this mould, get him. Let's see how he compares. Here he is with bludgeon. Now, obviously, I do have the head upgrade here and the decent weapons, but yeah, um, I still think I prefer the bludgeon mold. Yes, I know it's probably been me, me being picky because I have got the head uh, robot swords, but look at the sword that came with Megatron. It is it's just warped to high buggery. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for a third party to release a purple sword or just a silver chromed sword with a purple hilt for it to fit in. It's such a shame. Here he is with uh, Hegemon or Megatron. Um, just to give you a size comparison, um, Hegemon is slightly taller, but then Hegemon is also slightly taller than most of your Classics figures. So if you are looking for a Megatron to fit in with your Classics collection and you don't already have this mould, I do recommend you get it. Um, no doubt there will be a third party release the extras for this. It's just a shame that they have to. You do have uh, a fairly good head sculpt on here. I initially thought they were kind of dreads hanging from his hair there, but it is actually quite well sculpted. Just not a huge fan of that Megatron smirk. Now, if you need a Megatron for your classic set and you can't afford a Hegemon, then this is a viable option. You just have to put up with those gripes. Now, I've got a link to the Kapow Toys site just below here where you can purchase this figure. Um, thanks for watching the review, guys. I look forward to hearing from you all. And until next time, goodbye.